Everybody, it's Tyler here at Sugar Rush, checking in with 2072X Cloud Alicious coming in from Virginia. Uh, finalist just recently at All Saints. And they have a really cool machine we'll be talking about. I think one of the great things with teams is talking about the iterations that have gone into robots. And we're going to be covering uh, a lot of that, uh, not just uh, you know from a robot standpoint, but also talking about controls and programming as well, too, what they've been doing from that. Uh, really got to focus on where they've gone, especially from their intake uh, on through. And we're going to be covering anything from uh, PTO, their wings, uh, and so much more. Let's learn more about Cloud Delicious coming up here on Pips and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Eva, we're going to start out kind of from ground up, so talking about the uh, drivetrain you're using. I saw you're using an eight-motor drive, uh, so really got to hear more about what's gone into that. So something that we've had that stayed consistent since the start of our design process is our eight-motor drive. This is a really powerful drive base. We use um, 2.75-inch wheels, 450 RPM. This lets us have a really powerful drive base so we can stay strong. Um, it keeps us from having to compromise our defense as we use some of our other motors to transoft it into our PTO. One of the things when I watched your last match, uh, you're really going over that bump with ease on that. Was that when you were looking at uh, analyzing the over-under game, was that really important for you to just be able to go wherever you wanted on the field? Yeah, so being versatile on the field and being able to adapt to our strategy as much as the match changes, because this is such a fast-changing game, so being able to adjust with that as quickly as we can and make those changes and succeed in whatever situation we're put in, that was really, really important to us in our design process. Absolutely. And Dominic, with an 8-motor drive, I'm going to guess you have some sort of PTO uh, or something that, that compensates to have power somewhere else. So talk to me about your uh, PTO and what's gone into it. Yeah, so in order to do like a no compromises, both defense and offense, we needed to transfer motor power from the drive to the rest of the robot to our mechanisms. So we have a PTO down here in the center, it's this piston here. And basically what that does, it uh, shifts the gears on the outside. Can shift it real quick, show that. Yep. Between the drive and the outside gears. And that allows us to activate our other mechanisms and switch to six motor drive in the meantime. Okay, so you're still keeping six motors so far. That's still pretty powerful for our for a drive on there. I like that a lot. Uh, how about wings wise? What are you doing for that? So for our wings, uh, we actually went through a few different versions of them. We started off with uh, horizontal wings, which are like the uh, basic flip out from the side. And these were really nice. We were able to get locking geometry working. However, they were, weren't really rigid in the vertical directions. So, like they can bend up and down. So we decided to do afterwards, we noticed vertical wings that were really rigid in um, both directions because they couldn't really flip up nor pull back because of the direction the hinge was facing. However, with vertical wings, we couldn't fit a full 36 inch wingspan underneath the uh, um, elevation bar. Uh, so what we decided to do, we decided to do like a hybrid between vertical and horizontal. I call them butterfly wings because they open sort of like the doors on fancy sports. Oh, nice, sports. yeah. Yeah, and so to do that, we basically used a CAD computer-aided design modeled out the geometry in CAD and both ends of the piston rotate in multiple directions to make that work. And it's really neat because it allows us most of the rigidity of vertical wings, but also allows us full length wings able to fit under the elevation bar. No, I love the thought process going into that. That's, that's pretty awesome uh, from a wing standpoint. I don't think I've seen that yet. I love seeing new things with that too. Uh, Renu, let's talk about uh, intake on here. Uh, so you've gone through a couple iterations for that. I know you got a uh, previous one. So talking about what you had, where you've gone and how it's worked out uh, from that improvement so far. So yeah, we actually started out with um, an iteration similar to this one. Um, it actually did not have the piece of poly that was, is on our second iteration as shown. So at first we started out, our first intake was single piston powered, and it would kind of maneuver like this. It was only the standoff at first without the piece of poly. Um, so we changed it because the tribal would tend to slip out, especially during autonomous. So we added the poly so that it would kind of create a scoop when um, having the tribal inside. Um, it, tended, it worked really well. However, it wasn't very consistent for autonomous because since it's piston powered, it has to be very precise when you um, have the tribal inside. So we decided to go for an intake, like a motorized intake, since we realized that we have um, an extra motor in the PTO that we're not using, we decided to use that for our intake to see if we can get um, a better grip with the tri balls and not, ha not have to be very accurate when positioning to line up and aim for the tri ball itself. It also helps with scoring because we can grip the tri ball a lot easier since these are um, flex wheels. They have more grip when having the tri ball. 
Have you seen improvement in skills as well too by switching to this type of uh, intake? Um, during skills, we don't really use the intake as much. We use oh, the sure. wings. So we actually, um, for the first 30 seconds, we'll mash load, get all the travels across, and then we'll hop over the barrier or go from the side and just use our wings to push in instead of the intake. So the intake doesn't really play a huge role in skills. Yeah, makes a lot of sense on that too. So we started wrapping on this robot, Chris. Let's talk about controls, what's gone to it. Uh, you know, programming is such an underrated area that doesn't get enough attention on, on robots. Uh, so talk about what you are doing uh, from your standpoint with controls. Yeah, so right, on our robot, we only have one main sensor that we use, which is the IMU, the inertial sensor. But this inertial sensor gives us the power to do a lot of things. And one of those things is motion profiling. Yeah. In specific, this is asymmetrical trapezoidal motion profiles. I know, it's a mouthful. But what this allows us to do is smoothly ex control our acceleration and deceleration of the robot during autonomous. I also combine them with our PID control, which allows us to get the most accurate movements possible. And along with this, we also utilize the IMEs heavily on our drivetrain. So this means that we can use these sensor readings and use Kalman filtering to combine these values and get the best estimate that we can of the current relative position of the robot. Something I've uh, talked to other teams in regards to controls, a lot of times we, we always hear about it implemented autonomous. Is there any potential to look at using something like that in teleop as well too in the future? Yes, there is potential, obviously with the use of sensors, but right now this is a good start, especially with getting good control and accurate estimations of what the unknown values on your robot. Awesome. Well, Claude Alicia, thank you so much for taking time. Tell us about your team and your robot. Uh, good luck here at uh, Sugar Rush. Can't wait to see how you do throughout the rest of the over under season as well, too. So thanks a lot. Good luck and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.